I'm doing great. Uh, great, sir. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year from uh, other part of the world. <laughs> How was your uh, New Year's and stuff? My New Year started with talking with great people like you. Ah, oh, I appreciate that. So how the year new has started? So <clears throat> I um, brought it in with some friends and family, and uh, you know, for the most part, it was a pretty uh, fun and just relaxing uh, New Year's. Um, uh, so far, I've been able to kind of get started on a few things. Uh, I made it a good conscious effort to get more into. Um, some more emerging markets, and one of them would be uh, sort of the NFT meta space. And me and a uh, business partner of mine are looking more in depth into uh, understanding okay, what is it entitled, the communities, all of those different things, and uh, you know, essentially just how do we get plugged in with the right players and uh, become that, I guess that's in that thought space, right? Because, you know, everybody can create and, and do certain things, but how do we revolutionize this technology and make it meaningful, right? So, and I'm also coming out with a book. I, I want to make a book. Um, I know I'm already rambling. I apologize, but I want to make a book um, that, that entitles, you know, more into some of the future trends and technology. So I've been pushing it off. So luckily, 2022 is here. You know, there's no other reason why not to, right? <clears throat> awesome, man. So before talking about uh, you and the work that you are doing uh, and the service that you are providing to the world, uh, can you please introduce yourself to my audience? For sure, for sure. Well, and I always mess this up. I apologize, but hello, audience. Hello, everyone. My name is William Smith. I am a technologist. I'm also a technology strategist for Microsoft, and I'm also a managing director for Technical Paradigm. Essentially, I'm no different than you, enthusiasts in technology. Um, I love to work within tech, but essentially, I made my passion into helping revolutionize and transform people's um, footprint when it comes to anything technical. So, uh, you are now a technical architect. Yes, so <clears throat> I feel I have two two roles now, right? So um, at uh, tech at uh, Microsoft, I am a uh, technical um, strategist actually, and more or less my job is to work with technical architects and work with um, um, technical specialists, um, product groups, and different little um, specialist people who work on the back lines of products for Microsoft and essentially ensure that the client is getting the best value for their money uh, when it comes to anything, you know, uh, Microsoft, Azure, um, and even the product lines too, right? Like, you know, GitHub, um, uh, you know, uh, SharePoint, you know, you, you pretty much it, it's not just relation to just technical products that we offer. It could also be, you know, things in the line too. But so I, I align with their, um, specialists and, I, and we align with our specialists and we help funnel um, the best transformation when it comes to um, you know, getting people more into the cloud, uh, ensuring that they understand different new technologies that come out from Ignite and as well as just just know what the heck we're doing, right? Because Microsoft's a huge company, man. They're, there's things that I don't even know about and just talking to people about, hey, do you know such and such? It's like, you know, I, I never heard about that. Let's let get the right people in here. And then we talk about it. And then now I know. Awesome. And then so, to double down with that, and I'm sorry, I apologize. To double down with that, what I also do is um, <clears throat> uh, I am a managing director for uh, management consulting for Technical Paradigm. Uh, Technical Bar Paradigm is also a uh, recruitment firm that does um, different consulting, small consulting projects and things like that. But essentially what we do, we're, we're more for the FinTech and emerging market space. And essentially um, me and my business partner, Michael, um, we funnel a good channel into ensuring you, know, you, got, you guys have the right 
work and leg force um, for companies, but also ensuring if you guys are interested in different projects or um, developing in applications, you know, I also had that division as well. So what is WSC? All over the place, man. Yeah, yeah. So WSC, WSC Consulting is essentially what I do within the helm of um, Microsoft, uh, not Microsoft, but um, for technical paradigm. So essentially, I am the consulting wing of everything, right? So anything consulting-wise, technical, um, building systems in Azure, building new data sets and SQL or, or exploring different opportunities within Power BI and different things. You know, I'm the um, kind of more the, the one who's um, leading that charge. And uh, some of our customers are using some really intricate products. And it's, 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 it's always interesting, right? Like someone always mentions a new product that's coming out or something that's, that's being done. Um, essentially, we help digitally transform uh, companies that are using older software and solutions to be more competitive. So think of older banks, older law firms, older entities that are still using 2000 and previous uh, software. We need to get them back up and into track because a smaller, more agile firm is right around the corner and you know, it's time to adapt. So what is your background, uh, where you came from and what made you to uh, come into technology and what uh, made you to uh, uh, give the best products and best service, uh, the, the, the quality products uh, and uh, satisfy the customers? For sure, for sure. So um, so I don't know if you've ever been to the Chicago side, but I would love for you to come one day, man. Um, I'm born and raised, I'm a native of Chicago. I uh, grew up south side and, um, you know, pretty proud of it because it's, you know, predominantly a uh, black and brown culture. And essentially, you know, um, growing up, not too many STEM programs were um, prevalent. So it's interesting to see how I've kind of navigated through that channel. But, um, you know, just to, just to double down, you know, native from Chicago, um, grew up loving technology, being interested in the field. And uh, some of the uh, Marvel movies, I feel, kind of interested me more into technology. In fact, I think what got me more into tech was Iron Man. I've always wanted to uh, create like a little Iron Man or create a little Jarvis. And so I told my uh, high school teacher that I wanted to do that. And she, she at the time, I didn't know it, but she was a uh, manager for Accenture. And, and I was like, OK. Um, you know, how do we do this? And she essentially introduced me to the first language, which was Java. And so I would learn Java after school. And, you know, at, while everybody else was playing and doing stuff, I was learning how to code, um, you know, a console. It was just a small console app and different little things. But then that helped me get interested in the college where I went to for a little bit. I didn't finish. I went to U of I. Um, and then I went straight to work. Um, it's more for personal reasons. I didn't um, continue things, but I went to uh, straight to work and it's been very successful. Um, I've been able to work at some of the best, awesomest companies in the world. Um, you know, not only just Chicago, but I've worked in you know, California, New York, Philadelphia, and even London as well. Nine. So when you when did you understand uh, the, the 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 first time when uh, the, the the requirements of the client and uh, and uh, uh, to give uh, uh, the best uh, uh, software solutions for them for the first time in your life? For sure, for sure. So my first job was with a uh, mentor who got me into um, consulting, and as a consultant, you're high in demand, right? You're you're needed to just Go and do stuff. So, hey, we need you to do this ASAP. We need this ASAP. We need this ASAP. And essentially, you know, the client is no different than any other person. They want their product and they want it now. Um, and they're willing to pay top dollar for it. So with that being said, I knew I was in high demand, but I also knew it was a competitive field. So I had to be sharp, have to be constantly growing my skill set understanding different newer technologies, um, building a network, um, it all matters because as you grow, you start to understand, you know, you don't know all the 
facets of a certain thing. So it's best to diversify some of the talents that you have. So I could be good within the Microsoft stack and C Sharp and all those things, but then Billy could be good within um, Java and such and such, and then Amanda could be more of a John Rails and JavaScript. And uh, when you became technical architect? Oh, so I want to say a couple uh, a couple years ago, probably like five or six years ago, um, I was interested in more or less designing and implementing uh, a roadmap and a uh, blueprint for what uh, companies use, right? So, or what solutions are made of. And my first opportunity was with a uh, e-commerce uh, company within London. Um, and I was able to you know, start to build solutions for some of our uh, clients and whatnot. And then with there, I started to work within Deloitte, which was highly in demand, crazy company where you need to do everything now. Clients are just flurrying things at you. It's, it's literally like, if I will, like just constant flow of water, just shh. So I knew that my skills had to be continuously sharp as well as understanding of um, the basics and also just the more in-depth understandings of how the solutions work. And when I first started, I was a developer. So I understood how to build things and uh, more or less grown to be able to say why you build certain things. So WSC, your uh, consulting is your own company? Yes. When you started this? Um, actually, during the pandemic. I started during the pandemic and it was something that... Uh, I wanted to do that um, got me closer towards entrepreneurship um, because I've done little projects in the past and there was a time where I was able to um, do some uh, build a build an app for um, uh, a solution me and my uh, business partner at the time were doing. But uh, essentially, I wanted to get back into those things. I wanted to um, help companies be more competitive. You know, digitally transforming them, as well as ensuring that they have the best thing that comes to, you know, understanding, fulfilling what dreams or goals that they have in the current fiscal year. And with that, um, WSC was born. You know, essentially, it's a fairly small company. You know, there's only about a 10, 10 15 of us um, in the core field, and then we also have, um, you know, uh, a range of uh, outsource. Um, resources that we utilize and you know we learn to keep it lean we learn to keep things more agile and in depth um, that's because you know more or less it's, it's, it's easy the, the expression goes is it's harder to move an elephant as it grows so keeping things light and small is always the way to go um, but more or less just ultimately we're just here to um, make an impact for companies so you understand the complete uh, IT infrastructure and uh, all the IT resources? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. So uh, in your experience, what kind of diverse uh, uh, requirements that you saw and that you received and uh, and you fo you you uh, solved the problems? So banks and financial entity entities are always the most um, interesting, I'll say, because uh, there's so many facets, right? Like you have to keep things innovative, but you can't be too cutting edge where there's low security or there's uh, concerns of other things, right? Um, scalability, disaster recovery, um, some of the principles when it comes to building these solutions, they need to be solid when you build solutions for fintech. And it was a project I was working on and specifically um, where they needed uh, special functions in order to ensure that a transaction is made. And um, essentially that just means that um, every process had to be cross-referenced with another process. And um, that always gets exponentially trivial because not only are you building a um, solution or a software piece for a specific function, you also have to ensure that that function is a legit function that coincides with another thing. So um, just to keep it a little high level, um, you know, that project 
back and forth. You know, it's always it's always interesting going and doing those things. But um, you know, within the fintech firms, I I see a lot of growth within the need for um, constructing and innovating different solutions um, from a more secure level, even now, because, you know, every time we look up, there's some type of um, failure, there's some type of breach or some type of outage. So, and that's usually due to poor architecture solutions. I mean, there's other factors, right? Like um, uh, a decrease in security or a decrease in um, attention or whatnot, but like usually it's poor architecture. Yeah, well, uh, I'll call you in just uh, two seconds because I'm unable to mute myself when you're talking because I don't want uh, this side disturbance uh, uh, when you're talking. Yeah. Sure, sure. I'll be here. Yeah. So, can I continue? Yes, sir. Come on. Yeah. So, uh, how does, uh, can I say your uh, programming and development background made you to uh, understand uh, how uh, this that logical thinking, solving problems, creating uh, uh, the best quality software, uh, that kind of a thinking way made you become uh, uh, you know the owner of uh, WSC Consulting and uh, helped you in uh, developing uh, your company. How this technical and uh, business aspect came in you? Yeah, for sure. So. What I would say is um, some of the best architects are wonderful programmers. They understand what it takes to build a system from keyboard and mouse from the first click to the end of the click. Um, I think that growing up uh, as a developer and understanding some of those technologies definitely help um, rather than coming fresh out of high or college and um, going straight to be an architect. You don't understand what it takes to build a system. You know, there's other um, different intricacies that people think about um, that you won't if you don't have that vast knowledge of being a programmer. So growing up C sharp, Java, JavaScript, um, and understanding different concerns, how uh, uh, hackers can break into certain things like you know SQL injection attempts and um, what not and things like that. You understand how to build a system where it um, shields itself from those things. And you can only learn those things if you understand it and have built them before. So what is that quality which is making you to improve yourself and uh, uh, give the best service and uh, give the best uh, experience for users? You just stay hungry. You know, it's it's fun, it's fun stuff, but you have to stay hungry. You gotta understand that there's um, there's always a bigger fish in the sea. There's always another shark that's coming, but um, it's always to have this mindset of just improving your own self every day to be the best person than to compare yourself to uh, a Microsoft or um, an Apple or JPMC. You know, like it's it's better to improving oneself and in, in its abilities and then everything else is going to shine. So at WSC, if we're continuously comparing ourselves to other people, we'll never get anywhere. But if we compare ourselves to ourselves the previous day, there'll be ex exponential growth. So how much uh, you understood about uh, technology and uh, information technology in total? So, I mean, I by all means, I don't want to say that I know everything um, because you can never know everything. Um, in fact, there's always new things that come out and you're just like, wow, I didn't know about that. Um, but in total, I'd say um, I know a great deal when it comes to web um, development and uh, architecture solutions that interact with some type of public solution. Um, of course, I've worked on internal and internet pro products or private servers or, or private uh, applications. Um, but I think my wheelhouse is definitely public facing applications, uh, whether it be like, for example, a website that connects to a portal of a login and connects you to the back end internet and you're a logged in user and you see a different experience and um, that entitles a different solution and server. 
in service um, or essentially just creating intricate websites. You know, um, my wheelhouse would definitely be that sort of thing. Um, and then also, you know, I'm, we're, we're more and more getting towards into emerging markets. So um, one of the wheelhouses that I'm looking more into now is, of course, um, blockchain metaverses and different little um, things like that. So um, it's ever growing. Yes, sir, we're going. So. so you are into cloud. How many services that uh, you understand? Oof. <laughs> um, so to, for the exact products of services, oh man, I don't know every little thing, but for sure, you know, you got the big, you got the big three, right? GCP, AWS, and uh, Azure. Um, you know, you got IBM and Oracle's coming out, eventually Apple will come out, um, you know, and then uh, who else? You got, you got uh, uh, Heroku, you got, um, um, ooh, so many other ones, but uh, they're all, they're just coming out of nowhere, right? But uh, I feel those services, in a way, they complement each other because when one builds one, it's only a matter of time before another one builds one a little cheaper, so it entices people to come, or they build it in a different way where it's a little more secure. Um, but essentially, you know, uh, those are the ones that I know about of right now. How are uh, you as a technical architect that helped you in uh, interacting with customers and uh, understand their requirements and uh, give exactly what is uh, uh, useful for them at the same time what matches with the with their uh, business uh, level yeah and you know it's funny because you can't be too technical where you ignore your social skills um, you know of course being an architect is definitely not hands down it heads down I should say um, you constantly have to keep getting feedback from the clients and uh, the products, the product owners and um, the team. So you're on, you're constantly getting this funnel and this channel of suggestions, uh, better practices, um, pros, cons, you, you know, you name it. Um, it takes to understanding what you're building isn't necessarily finite, um, but you're building it in a way where it's kind of like a building. It, it keeps it. It gets better as um the solution and blueprint plans itself out. And talking with clients, you know, essentially treat them, you know, you want to be respectful and all, but essentially treat them um, with respect and essentially just like they're coworkers, right? Like they're, they're your coworkers at the end of the day, but you still have to respect them as if, you know, they're your, your leaders or your boss or your mentor. Um, so uh, learning those skills uh, when I was growing up, you know, I've made mistakes, right? I've, said some things that may have not have should have been said or implemented designs that weren't the best and we had a back and forth conversation but you know it, it's it's all about growing and being uh, a better person so that you don't make as many mistakes uh, you are old uh, you're already doing your own stuff you're uh, helping uh, a company in uh, improving uh, uh, the service uh, what what that thought made you to start WSC Consulting and why you want to contribute more? Hmm. So basically, what's my why for WSC? Okay. I would say, you know, as far as what differentiates us from like another service or another firm is um, one agile, one smaller, but also we have um, engineers, we have people who've been uh, developers, we have people who are developers, um, and they understand technology. Uh, plus, we have a, a wide range of skill sets and um, intricacies that uh, most companies may or may not have, right? Like everyone's an enthusiast, but it takes someone that doesn't know what they're doing, heads down, to get it done, to get it done. Um, the why and in, in intense mostly is just to really transform and digitize as much of the solutions that we have as possible that create some type of impact for companies, right? Whether it be business output, um, growth numbers and revenue, 
um, or create jobs for uh, a different type of market. What are uh, those values which are making you to do things uh, uh, better and uh, uh, and uh, make people to trust you and uh, the service that you are providing? And uh, what are those qualities that will make that you think that will make you reach uh, wherever you want to? So the big one is trust, like you mentioned. Got to trust us. So just being truthful and upfront and forthcoming uh, with every intent. And by I mean every intent, um, essentially, if we think of a solution, um, we want the client to know that this is something that if we were in your boots and we were consulting with another firm that was doing this for us, you were being sure the best quality of work that it was fairly and thoroughly thought out and just more or less just um, something that we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't fumble the ball on, right? So if we build these solutions, you know, it's trusted, it's well architected, it's, you know, for the most part been um, um, tested and true. So that trust factor is a big one. Um, and the constant communication is another one because, you know, sometimes it can be too head first and narrow where you ignore the suggestions of other companies and whatnot. You just, be, you, you make something that you want rather than what they want. So just, Knowing that forthcoming of what that person needs, what that company needs, that that, that that department, what do they need, and understanding the use case, right? Like, why are they doing it? Is this for um, a new environment? Is this for a specific set of users? Um, you know, it, it just it just depends on all those things, but just understanding the why is a big factor as well, and just the constant communication and trust. So what do you say about customer service? Uh, because uh, you you are into uh, three different things. Uh, uh, you are you are a consultant uh, and uh, you was a developer. You have experience uh, how to uh, develop uh, uh, softwares in the machines and uh, you are working uh, for Microsoft. So you understand what how things are going on, how uh, things connect with each other. So how when it comes to customer satisfaction or customer uh, uh, getting, uh, I mean, giving what they want and uh, uh, and satisfying them is a, is, a, is a big thing. So what you understood in your experience? To satisfy a customer, pretty much, correct? <clears throat> um, yeah, definitely working at the big firms helped me understand how to satisfy. So um, more or less understanding what a customer understanding um, what makes them tick, right? So it's customer service at the end of the day. So it's essentially you understanding um, what a person needs without compromising your own self as well. And it could range from constant uh, cadences where you're working uh, on different times and service for teams, um, building rapport, um, working in uh, networking with other solutions or um, finding ways to improve the relationship. Uh, relationship building and consulting is a huge thing as well because the more people you know, um, generally the better off you are, but you know, generally it's <clears throat> the, the more diverse um, mindsets that you acquire when you continue to evolve and, and, and network and transparent yourself with other people. Um, I would say that was the that will probably be the bigger one when it comes to uh, pleasing, just the networking and relations building. Um, second, I would say, of course, the technical acumen. You got to know what the heck you're talking about. People have to know um, that you know in this specific area you are the expert or you have a great gauge of what this is, and if not, you have the access to that. So in that way, you do have to have a network or some way to tie into another individual who does. Um, and then um, generally it's just, you know, just running through the curve, you know, you're going to run into roadblocks, but um, handling conflict is another one too, because, you know, it's just like working with a coworker, you, you know, you're going to run into conflicts as well, but it's just how you handle different situations, right? Like whether it be roadblocks, deadlines, times, um, crunch times, 
um, factors that may be out of our control, like, you know, pandemics. Yeah. So your connection with AI and then my ML. My connection with AI and ML? So more and more I'm getting more into uh, AI and ML um, because customers want to understand how can they utilize some of their solutions and how do they utilize this big vast wealth of um, warehouse data that they have. How do they make more um, confined and, and analytical solutions and or analytical guesses that reduce uh, time, that reduces guessing. Um, all of those, all of those really matter, right? And uh, there's been a few projects that I've been on that I've been able to uh, build solutions in regards to those. Um, but that was definitely, oh, it's definitely growing in uh, pro uh, popularity um, over the past few years uh, because you know everybody wants some way to utilize that data. Um, they want to make educated guesses. You know they want to make and ensure that we're using the best solution and, uh, you know, utilization of data. And what do you say about automation? Automation is another one too, because it saves time, you know, instead of getting somebody to, to build or do something, so there's a process that does it on the go and then it's automated. So it's a huge one, in fact, most, most solutions are into some type of automation, whether it be um, within the code or it's something like a low code solution where it's just automatic trigger. Uh, but yeah, definitely um, an increased uh, popularity, especially since the pandemic. So uh, do every uh, customers of yours or uh, the customers that you observed um, in your uh, uh, in your technical experience, uh, are they uh, all come from technical background, or they don't have, they don't know? Because uh, before give, before giving their requirements and before uh, coming for a solution for their uh, company, so do they have that technical uh, knowledge? I would say generally most companies have an idea. I won't say everyone understands technology to the T and can speak on certain things. But, um, you know, because we've worked with e-commerce companies and they're just like, we have no idea what to do. You know, we work with fintech firms that aren't as technical as we want them to be. Um, but it's just <clears throat> just learning how to navigate the roses, right? Or the weeds in this instance. But just understanding, you know, it's, it's not a... Um, uh, I don't want to say bias, but it's not necessarily an ego. Ego. So you know, we all come into this thing with our expertise or our non-expertise, and it's just understanding. You know, you guys are coming to us for what we know, and we want to ensure that you know we get the we get you the best value out of this. And you know, some people are clueless to technology. I mean, they don't even know what cloud is. Clueless. So. so, so how uh, a architect and you helping you in uh, uh, doing uh, the better business? I would say to let me let me uh, let me ask that question again. So, are you asking how do I help the non-technical, or do how do I help other uh, technical architects? No, uh, you uh, understanding uh, infrastructure, understanding uh, uh, the softwares that the employee in you who worked uh, uh, in development, how that person in you is helping you in uh, uh, improving the de uh, business development. Oh, for myself or for other people? For yourself, for yourself. Oh, oh okay. So, so how do I keep improving myself in the development space and things, right? Okay. Um, man, I just have a, a love and, and, and 
amorous feeling for technology. And I think um, that kind of helps me a lot. But as far as just understanding and growing, um, I'm in the tech, I'm in the tech space 100%. Uh, I always hear about tech, technology companies doing this or merging. So just overall, just staying in the loop of things, whether it's just news, different tech, technical points, um, and things like that. Um, people will say school helps. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I love school. School is great. School is a great place to meet people and, and network and, and, and do some really cool stuff. But it's it's not necessarily your only avenue. Like you got school, but you just have to you got Google, too. You know, you got the Internet. You got ways to just learn and do things that school will take you four plus more years to do where you can kind of pick things up in a year and a half. So um, school would help. Uh, getting something in the tech field, right? Like if you could, if you can sink a job, whether it be a non-technical or technical job, sinking a job into some type of technical um, company, uh, you put yourself in the in the field. You know, you're there. Like you understand what it, you know, you understand like what's going on due to like VR board meetings, but you also are around people who can connect you with the best resources, connect you with um, better, you know, better, better associations and, and, and communities. So it's just a, it's just an accelerated way of understanding what you need to do. Because there's all, like, you could go in every library book and understand these things, but the time factor, you know, you want to make sure you're utilizing your time the best way. So um, I would say just constantly being in the loop of news and different outlets that, you know, report on these technologies and, and findings. Um, cracking open a book. You know, there's there's always books out there. Um, O'Reilly's throwing out books. You know, you got uh, you know, your packet. Uh, they're throwing out books, and it's just just a wealth of information. And like, you can get lost into these things, but it's a great losing feeling or loose loose feeling where you're just like swimming and you're just like in mountains of information that you just culminate. So as a technologist, as a consultant, what do you think that may technology to reach uh, everywhere on this planet? Because uh, you are observing the gradual change in uh, uh, the, the 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 IT industry. So uh, there will be a lot of IT people who will be watching this video from anywhere on this planet. So how it reached everywhere? How this uh, hardware and software and uh, these IT services and uh, even uh, if you compare from uh, compare. Uh, uh, from last five years, there is a lot of development, lot of non-technical people entered into the internet, lot of business happening. So how how you see this? Because uh, you you are observing this from long time, and now you are a uh, you you have your own company, and uh, also you have uh, a uh, a strong uh, uh, development background. So how you see this scenario? So. Let me first say um, two things, actually. Let me first say I'm actually writing a book on um, the uh, future trends of technology. So whenever it comes out, I'll definitely send you that information. But um, secondly, I, I would love to see technology in the face of every person on the world. I'm a big advocate of it. I'm a futurist. I love technology and I want to, you know, want it to, to increase. Unfortunately, you know, the bad part is like it, it loses people's jobs, but the best part is it, it connects people and, and, it, and it evolves us into a different way of thinking, right? But um, from five years from before to five years now, you know, I'm definitely seeing a lot of trends um, in regards to, um, of course, the big ones, right? Crypto. Crypto is the, the biggest, one of the bigger um newer trends that I'm seeing, everyone's in it. Everyone's trying to get the money, right? Like they want to get the dividends. They want to uh, do those things. But um, I'm seeing a lot of growth in it. It's, it's, it's good growth, but it's also bad growth. I mean, it's affecting the, affecting, it's affecting the um, um, not, not necessarily the economy, but it's affecting um, the world. You know, it's creating, you know, fossil and, and carbon footprints and it's, it's becoming a pain so hopefully i'd see more efficient transaction where it, it reduces the amount of electricity um, that it produces um, also i'm seeing a, a bunch of people looking into work from home jobs you know due to uh, a certain uh, um, pandemic that's out there guys um, 
I'm seeing a lot of work from home opportunities. So everyone's trying to be a developer, which is good because there's there's a lot of websites out there. We need some people. Um, so we're creating a lot of uh, developers, designers, um, and just technologists. And it's great because let's say you know you're in a remote place, um, third, first, second world country, right? Um, you're provided opportunity that can help you capitalize and potentially help you feed your family. So like. How is that a bad problem, right? Um, and of course, NFTs and different things like that, those are, are growing. But within the cloud space, um, and to be more technical, uh, definitely seeing a lot of customers going to uh, containerization. Containerization, if, if I hear one more word about containerization, uh, everyone's into it uh, because of the, the packets that it provides. Um, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity for uh, big, big companies, real big companies that use mountains of data that don't want to like keep uh, close ties within one specific instance. They can just fire stuff up and fire it down in the wheel. Um, also, um, more companies are going into the cloud specifically uh, because it provides opportunity to um, save money, um, reduces uh, risk, and just really gets them out of that low clumpy data, you know, data warehouse, whatever. Um, and Let's see, what else? Uh, I'm big into the connectivity of different things, right? Um, and I know you probably heard about Facebook's newest thing. So that's a big trend now. But essentially what I'm seeing is a bunch of people uh, into uh, a digital, new digital world. So metaverses and these, di these types of digital events are starting to kind of pop up, right? Popping up, popping up, popping up. So I'm interested to see how those go. I, I believe in, in the next few years they're going to be really, really big, especially since more and more people are into that augmented mixed reality. Um, we're able to kind of tap into those using our phones, and they're making movies about it, like Free Guy, you know. So it's it's kind of cool seeing those things. But I mean, it's an actual it's an actual technology and it's an actual product that people are using. Uh. Was it, uh, what is that uh, unique quality of yours or uh, that unique uh, working style of yours is making you to stand out uh, from other consulting services or other developers or other IT people? I would say one of the things that kind of separates, you know, me specifically from others is, you know, I'm a human being. You know, I like to keep it honest and I like to keep it personal. I'm, a, I'm about relationship building. And um, I'm about technology, and I love both things. I'm highly future forward. I'm highly um, adaptable, and when it comes to uh, specific things about the clients, you know, um, I have an expert, right? You know, it's like the old uh, pawn stars things. I got a buddy, right? I got a buddy I can phone up. Um, essentially, you know, when it, if someone comes to us in regards to something that they're trying to build or something that they're interested in learning more about. You know, um, if I don't have an inkling of what the heck they are looking for, I can at least find somebody or I can Google it and figure things out. So I think that's my competitive edge. Like I know how to keep the chains going and relationship building. And of course, the technical acumen is a big factor, right? And we have um, pretty good technical expertise on the team, um, but also it's how we continue to hone our skills through the years to come that sets us apart from like a Deloitte or a bigger, big firm like that. Uh, you're providing your technical service, uh, you're, you're contributing uh, your knowledge and you're, uh, you're putting your physical mental efforts uh, 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 to develop yourself at the same time, develop your own company and also develop uh, uh, to be the, the important part in the IT industry. So not just in Chicago, you just want to stick in Chicago or you just uh, you want to explore yourself and uh, give your service, uh, give, contribute uh, more uh, people in the world uh, to, to, uh, to other countries in the world? We're global. We're global. We're not just Chicago. Um, we got clients in New York, clients in Europe, uh, Hyderabad. We have a team in Europe. We have a team in India. Uh, we're all over and we're slowly growing into more uh, 
uh, markets and more different cities. But definitely, uh, as the as the, as the time goes, um, we're working in different areas, and it's great. Um, but it's also not great because waking up around this time is not the best. Uh, I'm talking from the place where you have uh, a client from Hyderabad. From Hyderabad, oh yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, it's, it's nice and sunny over there, man. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's morning, 9:51 a.m. here, and it's night. Nice. Yes, yeah, it's night. You look outside, it's like, oh shoot, it's night outside. Yeah. <laughs> and it's cold, by the way. It's cold. It's ten. It's Eight, negative eight Celsius, negative 10 Celsius. <laughs> how, how you look at this uh, uh, connectivity between countries, uh, you know, technology, uh, as a technologist, uh, you are seeing the, 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 the right now, the scenario, the Skype is allowing us to connect with each other and know uh, uh, what we are doing and in different countries, how, uh, you know, what what is your observation about this technology growing so i think it's a really wonderful yeah, thing yeah. because uh, i'm i'm I'm, I'm stopping you here i didn't complete my question so how this uh, oh sorry go ahead and, yeah how this connectivity this technology today uh, the, these applications in the internet and these websites in the internet and these uh, technologies people like you are uh, making uh, uh, everybody uh, globally uh, human beings to connect with each other how does technical services and uh, technology and and uh, as an architect how uh, uh, the technology is going to uh, 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 help uh, humanity in total so it's kind of helping them right now, right? Like if you think of Facebook, uh, almost 20 years ago, man, it's crazy. Um, Facebook was something that revolutionized people having school reunions. They got a chance to connect with family uh, on a personal level, sharing pictures and doing different things like that, to uh, parents finding old love and old flings back in the day. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see how that has evolved to like us connecting and doing like events and being able to host parties and promote those parties on uh, a, a platform like Facebook. Um, technology is great. It's, it's a double-edged sword. Of course, there's going to be some worse things that come from it, but overall, it's, it's here to connect us um, with each other and to different resources, if you think about it. Google provides us an opportunity to learn about, you know, resources, connects us with different sites that essentially that we may have to like, okay, X, Y, Z keyword. So as technology grows, we grow and we become more, um, you know, in a way we kind of come dependent to it, but essentially we learn to um, revolutionize change with within humanity, you know, whether it's, someone in the middle of the country trying to figure out um, a programming language so that they can get an intricate job um, in the States or a bigger city, um, companies that are looking to do some competitive research. Um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a great technology and tool for us to continue to keep growing in any direction, right? Um, yeah. So at last, uh, what do you say uh, to my audience and to the world who's watching and listening to our conversation? On the same type of mission? Uh, about the service that you're providing, about the work that you're doing. How? What do you say to, to, to the people who are, who are listening to us? <laughs> well, first and foremost, I'd like to say, hey, and uh, glad you guys are still working. Definitely, especially during these times. I hope you guys staying safe and well. Um, but a message to everyone else, you know, I would definitely say, um, hope you guys are listening to your customers and listening to what they are um, um, wishing to fulfill in this 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 journey that they wish to go with you, right? So they are trusting in what you're going to provide is the best thing for them, 
And they're also hoping that your expertise can get them closer to whatever goals or whatever that they're looking to. Um, so the trust factor, the relationship building, um, and just overall, just like relationship building with, you know, um, people of like mindedness, right. Or like, uh, competitiveness, right. So, um, people interested in connecting with me, feel free to, but essentially it's just, it's, we're in a network, right? Like if I'm greater at this, you're, someone else can be greater at this. And we all kind of help each other out in a way. It's good to see things like that than to kind of see it in a more competitive way. Um, and finally, uh, hopefully you guys are staying abreast with different technology because there's always some new coming out. And it's just, it's, it's interesting to think of how technology grows and how it flows how things phase in and phase out. So I'm hoping you guys staying are, are staying abreast uh, certain new things that are coming up. So I'll, I'll put uh, your web links in the description of this video. People who find our video on YouTube can see the work that you're doing and uh, can see the service that you're providing. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, what do you say as an architect, uh, as a business uh, developer, what do you say about uh, I mean, first thing is, uh, uh, what is about my questioning in this conversation? Can you repeat that one more time? Uh, your observation about my questioning in this conversation. Oh, so basically, how how well the questions have been as a as a as a director or architect or whatever. Okay. Um, no, uh, I think they're uh, pretty good. Your observation, your observation about my questioning in this conversation. Oh, so so my, op I'm sorry, man. Um, I'm trying to understand the question. So, or or more or less how to form it. Um, so basically, you want me to um, answer how do I uh, perceive some of the questions that you're. Uh, it's, that you're asking or? Okay. I mean, what is your observation? What do you say about uh, my questioning uh, in this conversation? What you understood about my questioning? Oh, oh. Um, so I'll, I'll be honest, uh, you, this is one of the few uh, interviews that I've done, so I'm actually pretty interested in doing them. Um, I've done a couple of them, but I would like to get more, uh, more interviews and more talks, you know, because it, it, they feel great. Um, and they also give me to connect with people like you, man. I, I do appreciate talking with you. Um, but I think the questions were great. I think they were very, uh, they weren't too like technical or it's just like, you know, what the heck? I don't know how to think. And, uh, but they were, they were, they were good enough for me to kind of like think of actual solutions and like, okay, this is what we did in a way that kind of helped this company out um, without really um, compromising that uh, uh compliance right because you can't say names or you try not to say names but um it didn't provide a way that it said okay we built this for them and they know about that so i like the questions they're good and uh what do you say about my videos have you seen any videos of mine on youtube i see a couple um i think there's one guy from italy he was pretty good i like that one and uh, I think I saw one more a guy from the States. I think he worked for the government or something like that. But yeah, you, you're you interviewing quite a lot of people, man. So I want you to uh, do what you are doing and uh, do what you love and uh, make more people smile and uh, uh, give what they want. And I'm sure because of your contribution, IT industry is going to uh, develop and uh, increase uh, the revenue at the same time wealth also manpower also help a lot of people in uh, in uh, different parts different parts of the world i i'm sure i the, the way you're working i saw your website uh, i saw the description of yours uh, it tells what you are so i'm sure uh, 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 if you continue like this i'm sure uh, you're going to reach everywhere on this planet Appreciate that, man. That's the goal. Technology in the face of every hand. Awesome. So can I put this video on my YouTube channel with your permission? Yes, yes.
please, you know, try to get out the ums and ands or ers, but feel free, yes, that'd be great. And also, can I put this video and, and audio clip on my podcast, website, internet, social media, everywhere with your permission? Yes, that'd be uh, good. I, I, I'm actually, I did master's in software engineering and uh, graduation in computer science and engineering. So I'm doing this to understand uh, 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 people like you, what they are, what you people are doing and understand if I want to work in cloud tomorrow, if I get an opportunity uh, 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 to understand what is happening in the world and uh, to implement in the job that I'm doing uh, for, the, for, the, for the quality service. Yeah, that'd be, man, like, it's so crazy to think about that. So you're, you're a student, man. Like, it's, it's so many great opportunities and stuff. Like, it, it, from your perspective, man, like, you, you, you're in a good point because essentially you'll be building the newest generation of technology. And, like, we're talking from that mountain of before, but you're getting that knowledge and you're you're kind of carrying the torch, kind of like how the Olympics work. So you're in a really good spot, um, how things can revolutionize and how you can change people's lives. Um, so I commend you, um, but man, it's, it's so many opportunities. Um, I definitely think that some of the things that I've talked about, you know, five years from now, it may, be, it may change. You know, cloud right now is a big one, I don't I don't necessarily see things declining in it, but there's a chance that you know something may come come around and bite cloud away, you know. It may it may be um potentially something good, but that's further in, in the future. I think cloud right now to learn is, is awesome for you to do. Um especially if you get a programming language on your belt, you know, whether it be like Java, Java would be really good, especially in your predicament. Um Java and some sort of like web programming language if you're trying to go into web, um, if you're trying to do more um, back-end solutions, procedural stuff, Python would be great. So Python is a huge one. Python is just everywhere, man. Everybody's using it. So if you know that, that'd be awesome. And um, some sort of SQL, you know, SQL, no SQL. Awesome. Uh, thank you for giving me your valuable time. Uh, it's night for you, but still uh, you gave me opportunity and uh, you allowed me to ask a few questions and uh, told about uh, the work that you are doing uh, to me and to my audience. Uh, man, I, I, I apologize for the delays it's before and, and, you know, it's been an ongoing thing, but, you know, this has been very awesome and I, I commend you for your success and uh, I know this channel is going to grow. I hope uh, your values uh, will uh, uh, impact uh, more people uh, and humanity and uh, create positive energy. You as well, my friend. You as well, my friend. Take care, Will. You too. See you, Sai.